I'm standing at the location called Castel Nuovo in order to show you a little bit about the Isonzo battles of the First World War and what actually happened here. Now today it is an absolutely fantastic day, wonderful sunny skies. There's a tiny bit of wind which will sound worse than the camera, but it's, it's wonderful. But, but a hundred years ago, on this spot, uh, it was just behind the front line and it's a location of terrible battles. And uh, we'll start off here with this grouping of buildings which is Castel Nuovo and I read uh, what General Cadorna wrote and uh, his objectives as part of the first battle of the Isonzo in June 1915 was to capture this location and as such uh, it was then called uh, Hohenlohe oh, this was at least the name of the the building uh, which is behind the trees down there and with great difficulty it was taken. This area of what is today Italy and Slovenia is called the Karst region and it's named after the stone which is here. Now looking in that direction, that's, that was uh, where the Italian border was down there and it's all flat. Now on the 24th of May 1915 Italy invaded uh, it attacked Austro-Hungary after the Treaty of London in which it was promised all sorts of things by the British and French and with all these great offers in hand it went into, into war. Now this area is today Italy but uh, the area behind me is today Slovenia because it lost it all after the Second World War. Now Coming down here, we have this uh, location here, which I mentioned at Castel Moor. Now I'm going to mention a little bit about what is there today, because there's a vinery and there's also a, uh, they produce olive oil. It is, the wine was outstanding, uh, really, really good. I tried too, I tried the Cabernet, Sau uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and the Cabernet Fan. To, to my taste now, and maybe I'm not such a great wine expert, but it was outstanding. And I've got the lovely, uh, like restaurant, bar area, as agro-tourism, uh, outstanding. So uh, certainly a great place to come to. And look at these wonderful views. Now, if we go back to the First World War, uh, when this area was captured, obviously they wanted to capture the high land, and uh, that makes sense. There's a certain logic to it. And looking down in the valley below, we've got places such as, uh, in front of us, we've got Gradiska. Now, Gradiska is an absolutely outstanding town. It's got this castle, the walls. Um, it, it, when, I, when I went in there, it's, it's one of the few places when I actually go in, I thought, this is amazing here. Absolutely wonderful. But can you imagine, though, the Italian troops that get up here, they capture this bit after hard battles, and beyond them, they can see the mountains and they know that it's going to even it's going to get worse and worse and well, they got they got here these this part here was captured in june 1915 uh, with serious losses largely caused because the attack they took so much time to capture the low areas behind me now the reason they did that was because the austrians didn't have uh, any troops uh, of any uh, any large numbers of troops in the area they set up a few roadblocks uh, anything to hinder the Italian advance. But the Italians weren't ready to advance. They didn't have the artillery in position. They declared war. They didn't actually sort of uh, get everybody around the table and decide, have everything planned. The re and what happened was this. This gave the Austrians time to fortify the higher areas. Now, undoubtedly, the, the Austrians had started to fortify in the summer of 1914, uh, realising that although Italy had, wasn't... At, an ally and had been an ally for 30 odd years, it, uh, its uh, reliability in this war uh, was uh, unsure. And Italy refused to join in the First World War on the side of its allies Germany and Austria for the reason that uh, it, it said it was a war of aggression, had nothing to do with it. So it didn't get involved. On that very subject, I'll mention that today is the 8th of April. 2016 and 150 years ago today, today, I just thought this now, 
it, uh, Italy and uh, Prussia, as it then was, entered into an alliance which was directed against Austria. And the objective then, as far as the Italians were concerned, was to take the, the Veneto and uh, areas which are in the whole valley from uh, Austria, which it got, although it failed actually to defeat the Austrians on the field, Austria was beaten by uh, the Prussians. And uh, Austria, indignantly, at the end of the war, refused to hand the hand over to Italy. So instead handed over to France, and France gave it to Italy the following day. Now, the objective, or one of the objectives, uh, of the battles of the Isonzo became the town of Gorizia. I don't think it's a particularly important place to capture. You can sort of see it in the distance down there. But uh, this was the, the, the propaganda brought it out as an important objective. And, well, it was uh, eventually captured in the 6th Battle of the Azonzo on the 8th 9th of August 1916. The terrible loss of life. Now, I'm going to go back to the cast. I've left my bicycle here and I want to continue walking up this direction. This building was once called Hohenlohe when this was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and that's the name of the villa. You can see this sign to it now. The villa dates to the 16th century. Unfortunately it was destroyed during the First World War very heavy fighting here in June 1915. The statue we see in front of us was for the poet Italian soldier Ungaretti. The gardens have been named after him. And with this wonderful piece today, well, excepting of course the work going on in amongst the olive trees were, which are being cut or pruned I should say because not being cut down and uh, some work going up the top with some concrete being mixed before the tourists come here but this wonderful piece the birds singing the sun the blue sky hard to imagine what was going on here 101 years ago and this in fact, became an Italian position, only a kilometre behind the front. And the front uh, stood from the first to the sixth battle of the Isonzo, only about a kilometre or so from here. And so we've got positions, trenches, which would have been very close to here. Now, this was visited by a number of people, including the King of Italy came here to visit the troops. And General Nivelle was here as well. You see poetry and the signs there. Now, there's a picture of the King standing up here. So we'll have a look at where the King once stood. So there we have a picture related to the king's visit and this is where it was. Now the king of Italy was only 152 centimeters tall so he looked a bit silly when he was standing next to the king of the Belgians. I can't quite remember how tall he was but it, we, he was heading towards 190 so there was a, a very big difference between the two of them. And there we have a view looking over the plain which the Italian troops advanced in the end of May and the beginning of June 1915. 
and soon we'll be having a view of the mountains which they would have to cross. It's the name of the Park Giuseppe Ungaretti. Park Ungaretti. We have there a memorial for a lady who was a partisan and she was killed during the Second World War. So this is the Razzi Trench. Razzi, Razzo is a rocket in Italian. So, a trench of rockets. They named the trenches after things that happened to them there, or they found there. So we've got things like the trench of leafy branches, which sounds uh, alright, but it was a horrible place. Thousands of people from both sides died there. During the war, of course, it wasn't porous, so this is uh, what happened. Uh, it's, only quite, it's quite recent, as you can tell, uh, the vegeta vegetation is, is new, it's very young. You can see parts in there as well. Now, the front line stood here from the summer or well, June 1915 to August 1916. Then it advanced, so went over there. And where I'm standing now was effectively no man's land. Now, the trenches were largely built by the Austrians. The reason for this was they had time to prepare the defences. They had time to prepare the defences from the summer of 1914, and after Italy entered the war, the Italians gave them plenty of time to get something together and to get troops called up. This location is called Altura di Palazzo and we can see here in fields with sheep We've got the ruins there from the First World War, a trench line on both sides of the road, which is absolutely distinct all these years later, 100 years later. 